The autumn air was crisp as the leaves turned fiery shades of orange and red. Halloween approached, and the small town of Hollow Creek buzzed with excitement. Each year, the townspeople decorated their homes with cobwebs and jack-o'-lanterns. But this year felt different. A foreboding sense of dread hung in the air like a heavy fog. Emma and her friends, eager to embrace the spirit of Halloween, decided to venture into the infamous Hollow Creek Cemetery. It was said, it was said that the spirits of those buried there roamed freely on Halloween night, and the group was determined to prove the legend wrong. Armed with flashlights and bravado, they entered the cemetery, their laughter echoing in the stillness. As they wandered deeper into the graveyard, the mood shifted. The moonlight cast eerie shadows, and the rustling leaves sounded like whispers. Emma felt a chill creep down her spine, but brushed it off as excitement. The friends stumbled upon a weathered headstone, its inscription barely legible. Here lies Margaret Wren, 1820-1857. An inexplicable chill swept over them as they read the name. Who was she? Jake, the group's self-proclaimed skeptic, asked, shrugging off the eerie vibe. Just a townsperson. They say she was accused of witchcraft, Lily replied, her eyes wide with intrigue. People say her spirit haunts this place, seeking revenge. The wind howled, rattling the branches overhead. Emma felt an unsettling presence lurking nearby. Let's move on she suggested, eager to escape the oppressive atmosphere. As they walked away, Emma glanced back at Margaret's grave, convinced she saw a figure watching them from the shadows. She blinked, and it was gone. After an hour of exploring the graveyard, they gathered near a towering oak tree. The group shared ghost stories, their imaginations running wild. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the cemetery, uh, startling them. They turned to see a tombstone had toppled over. What the hell was that? Mark exclaimed, his face pale. It's just the wind, Jake said, though his voice wavered. They all knew the truth. The cemetery was alive with an unseen energy. Determined to prove there was nothing to fear, Jake challenged the group to a game of truth or dare. Lily, always the brave one, dared Jake to go back to Margaret's grave and read her epitaph aloud. Reluctantly, he agreed, but a palpable tension hung in the air as he walked away from the group. Come on, Jake. Hurry up. Emma called after him, but he didn't respond. The others exchanged nervous glances, anxiety gnawing at their resolve. Minutes passed, and Jake still hadn't returned. Panic set in as they decided to follow him. They made their way through the maze of tombstones, calling his name. The moon shone brighter, illuminating their path, but a thick fog began to roll in, enveloping them. When they reached Margaret's grave, their hearts sank. Jake stood frozen, staring at the headstone, his face ashen. What's wrong? Emma asked, fear creeping into her voice. Something, something's wrong, Jake stammered, pointing at the grave. The earth around it had been disturbed, as if someone or something had clawed its way out. Suddenly, a shrill scream pierced the air. Emma and her friends spun around, their flashlights flickering. The beam of light illuminated a figure draped in tattered white, her hair flowing like smoke. Emma's breath caught in her throat as she realized the figure resembled the old woman in the stories. Margaret Wren. Leave this place, the apparition screeched, her voice echoing like a thousand wails. The ground trembled beneath their feet and the air grew cold, sending shivers down their spines. The friends stumbled back, fear consuming them. They turned to run, but the fog thickened, disorienting them. The ghostly figure moved closer, her hollow eyes locked onto Emma as if searching for something. Help me, Margaret cried, her voice now a haunting whisper. You must help me. Frozen in terror, Emma felt an inexplicable connection to the spirit. What do you want? She managed to ask. Find my bones, Margaret pleaded, her voice echoing through the darkness. Free me from this curse. Emma glanced back at her friends, their faces twisted in fear. Without thinking, she stepped forward. We'll help you, she declared, her heart racing. The others looked at her in disbelief, but the desperation in the ghost's eyes compelled her. The apparition faded into the mist, leaving behind an eerie silence. The friends exchanged worried glances, realizing they were in far deeper than they had ever intended. Are you crazy? We can't help a ghost! Jake shouted, but Emma felt an undeniable pull. We have to find out what happened to her. As they gathered their courage, Emma could feel the weight of Margaret's sorrow resting heavily on her heart. The search for the lost bones had begun, and in the dark recesses of the cemetery, they would uncover secrets better left buried. 
The chilling air wrapped around Emma and her friends like a cold shroud as they made their way back to the heart of Hollow Creek. The reality of what they had just encountered settled heavily on their shoulders. Emma felt a flicker of determination amidst the fear that had taken root in her heart. They had to help Margaret Wren, if only to appease the restless spirit they had awakened. As they walked, Emma recalled bits of the local legend. Margaret was accused of witchcraft and supposedly executed, but no one knows where her body was buried, she said, trying to recall the tales her grandmother had told her. They say she was buried in the old churchyard, but nobody goes there anymore. Great, so now we're ghost hunters? Jake scoffed, but his bravado had faltered. Let's just go home and forget this ever happened. No, Emma insisted, her voice firm. We can't just abandon her like that. We need to find out where her bones are. Lily stepped closer, her eyes wide with fear and excitement. If we're going to do this, we need to go to the old churchyard. It's only a few blocks from here. With little more than flashlights and a sense of dread, the group made their way toward the abandoned church. Its crumblings loomed in the distance, a silhouette against the moonlit sky. As they approached, a sense of foreboding enveloped them, and the wind whispered through the trees like a warning. The old church was shrouded in darkness, the doors hanging ajar as if inviting them inside. We should stick together, Emma whispered, her heart pounding as they stepped inside. Dust motes floated in the air, illuminated by the beams of their flashlights. The interior was a graveyard of broken pews and shattered stained glass, a testament to the years of neglect. In the back of the church, a staircase spiraled down into darkness. This must lead to the crypt, Lily said, her voice trembling. The thought of what lay beneath made Emma's stomach twist, but they had come too far to turn back now. Stealing themselves, they descended the stairs, the air growing colder with each step. The scent of damp earth and decay filled their nostrils. At the bottom, they found a small, dimly lit room lined with crypts. Emma's heart raced as she scanned the area, feeling Margaret's presence more strongly. Look, Mark exclaimed, pointing to a worn plaque on the wall, half hidden by shadows. It bore Margaret's name. Emma's heart sank. The inscription read, Margaret Wren buried in the wrong grave. May her spirit find peace. What does that mean? Jake asked, his voice barely above a whisper. I think it means she was buried here, but not in the right spot, Emma replied, her mind racing. If her body was moved or hidden, it would explain why her spirit is restless. We have to find her bones. Determined, they began searching the crypts, prying open stone lids with whatever they could find. The sound echoed eerily in the cold room, the darkness closing in around them. As they opened each crypt, they found nothing but dust and bones of those long forgotten, each lid more difficult to lift than the last. Finally, Emma spotted a crypt at the far end, smaller than the others. Over here, she shouted, her voice cracking with a mixture of excitement and fear. The group hurried over, and together they pushed the heavy lid aside. Inside lay a tattered cloth that smelled of mold and decay. As they peeled it back, they uncovered a skeletal hand, delicately intertwined with a rusted silver locket. It's her, Emma breathed, recognizing the locket as the one Margaret had worn in life. We found her. Just then, a rush of cold air surged through the room, snuffing out their flashlights and plunging them into darkness. Emma felt the temperature drop as a deafening silence enveloped them. Panic set in as they fumbled to relight their flashlights, the shadows dancing mockingly around them. Suddenly, the ghostly figure of Margaret appeared before them, more vibrant and terrifying than before. You found me, she said, her voice echoing like a distant storm. But you must help me release my soul. Emma clutched the locket tightly, feeling the weight of the task before them. How? she asked, her voice trembling. Take my bones to the hollow tree in the cemetery. Bury them there. Only then will I be free, Margaret implored, her eyes piercing into Emma's soul. The ground began to shake beneath them, the crypt trembling as if the very earth was alive with anger. We have to go now, Lily screamed, her eyes wide with terror. The group scrambled to gather Margaret's bones, wrapping them carefully in the tattered cloth. As they ascended the stairs, the walls shook and a chilling wail echoed around them, growing louder as they reached the exit. Outside, the fog thickened, swallowing the church behind them as they raced back to the cemetery. The cold air clawed at their skin, and shadows twisted unnaturally around them. 
When they arrived at the hollow tree, Emma felt the weight of Margaret's spirit pressing down on them. With shaking hands, they buried the bones at the base of the tree, whispering apologies and promises of peace. As they filled the grave with earth, a wave of warmth enveloped them, and Margaret appeared one last time, her face serene and grateful. Thank you, she whispered, her form shimmering like morning dew. You have freed me. With that, the air cleared, the oppressive weight lifting, the fog receded, and the night became calm. Emma and her friends stood together, the moon shining brightly above them, knowing they had done something incredible. They turned to leave, glancing back one last time at the hollow tree. The sense of dread that had haunted Hollow Creek was gone, replaced by a profound peace. As they made their way home, they couldn't shake the feeling that they had changed forever. The whispers of Hollow Creek would echo in their minds, but this Halloween would be remembered as the night they brought a restless soul to peace. Story number two. It was a cold Halloween night in the small town of Cedar Hollow, where the air was thick with the scent of damp leaves and the sounds of rustling branches. Every house had been transformed into a mini haunted attraction, cobwebs draped across porches, carved pumpkins glowing eerily from within. The children ran from house to house, their laughter mingling with the occasional scream as they encountered ghouls and ghosts on their trick-or-treating adventures. In the heart of Cedar Hollow stood an old Victorian house, rumored to be haunted by the spirit of Margaret, a woman who had mysteriously vanished years ago. The townsfolk avoided the house, telling stories of strange lights flickering in the windows and ghostly figures seen wandering the yard. Yet, this Halloween, a group of adventurous teens decided to spend the night inside, eager to document their ghost hunting experience. Among them was Sarah, a skeptic who believed that ghost stories were merely figments of imagination. It's just an old house, she scoffed, adjusting her camera. <laughs> I'll prove to you guys that there's nothing to be afraid of. Her friends, Jason, Emily, and Mike, were equally excited but wary, each feeling the weight of the house's ominous history. As dusk fell, they made their way to the front porch, its wooden steps creaking underfoot. The door, surprisingly, swung open at their touch, revealing a dimly lit hallway filled with dust and shadows. The air inside felt colder, heavier, as though the house were holding its breath, waiting for them to intrude. Let's set up in the living room, Jason suggested, leading the way. They gathered around a flickering candle, its flame casting eerie shapes on the walls. Emily began to record their adventure, her voice filled with excitement and a hint of trepidation. Welcome to the haunted house of Cedar Hollow. We're here to investigate the legend of Margaret. Let's see if we can make contact with her spirit. As the night wore on, they shared stories of Margaret's tragic past, how she had vanished on Halloween night decades ago leaving behind a grieving husband and a town full of questions. It was said that every Halloween, the anniversary of her disappearance, her spirit would return, searching for closure. Enough stories, Sarah said, rolling her eyes. Let's try something more interesting. She pulled out a Ouija board, the plan to reach out to Margaret's spirit with a hint of bravado. The others hesitated, but curiosity outweighed their fear. They gathered around the board, fingers poised on the planchette, their breaths visible in the chilly air. Is there anyone here with us? Emily asked, her voice trembling. The planchette remained still, and after a few moments, Sarah snorted in laughter. See? Nothing. Suddenly, the candle flickered violently, casting shadows that danced around the room. A cold breeze swept through the space, extinguishing the flame, plunging them into darkness. What was that? Mike whispered, his voice barely audible. Just the wind, Sarah insisted, though her bravado began to wane. Let's light another candle. They fumbled in the dark, the atmosphere thickening with tension. As they lit a second candle, they heard a soft whisper like a gentle breeze brushing past them. Yet there were no windows open. Did you hear that? Jason asked, his voice tinged with apprehension. Emily nodded, her eyes wide. It sounded like help. Before they could react, a loud crash echoed from the kitchen. They exchanged panicked glances, hearts racing. Let's check it out, Jason suggested, his voice shaky but determined. They made their way cautiously to the kitchen, where a set of old dishes had fallen to the floor, shattered pieces scattering everywhere. Maybe it was just an animal, Sarah said, but the fear in her voice betrayed her. Suddenly, the air grew colder. 
and a figure appeared at the edge of their vision, a woman in a flowing white dress, her face obscured by shadows. Margaret? Emily whispered, stepping forward. The figure flickered like a dying flame, then vanished. Panic erupted among them, and they rushed back to the living room, hearts pounding. What just happened? Mike gasped, struggling to catch his breath. Did we just see a ghost? Sarah, once the skeptic, now felt the weight of fear pressing down on her. It can't be real, she stammered, but doubt filled her mind. The atmosphere in the house shifted. The walls felt as if they were closing in, the air thick with something unnameable. As they gathered their composure, a loud thud echoed from upstairs, causing them to jump. We need to leave, Jason urged, but Sarah was frozen in place, her curiosity outweighing her fear. Let's just go upstairs and see if there's more, she suggested, though her voice trembled. Reluctantly, they followed her lead, climbing the creaking staircase. Each step felt like a descent into madness, the house seemingly alive with whispers and shadows. They reached the second floor, where the air grew even colder. At the end of the hallway stood a door slightly ajar, a dim light flickering from within. With a deep breath, Sarah pushed the door open, revealing a room filled with old furniture covered in white sheets. But in the center stood an antique mirror, its surface swirling with an unnatural mist. Is that? Emily began, but Sarah interrupted, stepping closer to the mirror. As she peered into it, her reflection warped, distorting into the face of a terrified eyed woman, Margaret. Screams filled the air as the mirror shattered, shards flying everywhere. The last thing they saw before darkness engulfed them was a hand reaching out from the mist, grasping for them as the house trembled with a haunting wail. When Sarah regained consciousness, she found herself lying on the floor of the Victorian house. Her friends sprawled around her. The dim light from the window filtered through the dusty air, casting eerie shadows across the room. Panic set in as she scrambled to her feet. Guys, wake up! She cried, shaking Jason's shoulder. Jason groaned and blinked, looking up at her with confusion. What happened? Where are we? We were upstairs. The mirror, it shattered, and then everything went dark. She exclaimed, her heart racing. The chilling memory of the woman's face in the mirror flashed in her mind. Emily stirred, rubbing her head. What's going on? Why does it feel like a nightmare? Mike sat up, his expression bewildered. I think we need to get out of here. Now. They stood up, glancing around the living room, which seemed to shift subtly as if the walls were watching them. The atmosphere felt oppressive, filled with a sense of foreboding. What time is it? Jason asked, fumbling with his phone. The screen flickered and went black, leaving them in a silence that was only broken by their breathing. Great. Our phones are dead, Sarah said, frustration bubbling beneath her fear. Let's head back downstairs and find the front door. As they made their way toward the staircase, they noticed something on the wall, a series of photographs that hadn't been there before. The images depicted Mar Margaret, looking happier in life, her husband by her side, and then the last photograph showed her alone, eyes wide with terror. What the hell? Mike muttered, stepping closer to inspect them. The air felt charged, and a low hum resonated in the walls, sending shivers down their spines. Guys, we have to go! Sarah urged, leading the charge down the stairs. The floorboards creaked ominously beneath them, as if the house itself was warning them to turn back. Just as they reached the front door, it slammed shut with a deafening bang, rattling the very foundations of the house. They turned, fear washing over their faces as they saw the shadows deepening in the corners of the room. What the hell is happening? Jason shouted, panic rising. Maybe we can find another way out, Emily suggested, her voice trembling. Let's check the kitchen again. They bolted to the kitchen, adrenaline coursing through their veins. The broken dishes were still scattered on the floor, but now they could hear faint whispers echoing from the walls. You shouldn't be here, a voice hissed, chilling them to the bone. Suddenly, a cold gust of wind swept through the kitchen, and the cabinets swung open and shut as if a furious spirit were trying to expel them. Get out! Get out! The voice echoed, filling the room with dread. Maybe we can break a window, Mike shouted rushing to the back door, but it wouldn't budge. It felt as if something, some force, was holding it shut. Desperation clawed at them as the whispering grew louder, more insistent. Margaret, we're sorry. We just want to leave. Emily cried out, trying to reach the spirit she had hoped to contact. We mean no harm. The air turned icy, and the shadows coalesced into a figure, this time more defined, 
Margaret, her face a mask of sorrow and rage. You awakened me, she wailed, her voice echoing like a mournful wind. You disturbed my rest. What do you want? Sarah asked, her heart racing as she stepped back. We didn't mean to intrude. I am bound to this place, Margaret cried, reaching out a ghostly hand. I seek justice. My story must be told. Jason stepped forward, trying to reason with her. We can help you. We'll find out what happened to you. Just let us go. The specter hesitated, her form flickering as if struggling between anger and sorrow. You must face the truth, she whispered, her voice softening. Only then can I find peace. Without warning, the house began to tremble, the walls vibrating as the shadows grew thicker around them. What truth? Mike yelled, panic flooding his voice. Find the diary, Margaret urged, her form wavering. In the attic, the truth lies within. Before they could respond, the spectral figure faded into the mist, leaving them standing in the kitchen, shaken and confused. The attic? We need to go now, Sarah insisted, her voice rising above the chaos. They hurried back to the staircase, racing up to the third floor. The attic door stood ajar, a faint light spilling into the dim hallway. They pushed the door open and stepped inside, the space cluttered with forgotten relics of the past. Dust danced in the beams of light, and there, on an old trunk, lay a leather-bound diary, its pages worn and yellowed. Jason grabbed it, flipping it open. The first entry detailed Margaret's life, her joy, her marriage, and then her despair. As they read on, the tone shifted dramatically. He was never the man I thought he was, one entry revealed. The betrayal, I fear for my life. Emily gasped. She was trying to escape. The last entry... Mike murmured, pointing to the final page, hastily scrawled, I know he will come for me tonight. If you find this, I am afraid it will be too late. Suddenly, a heavy thud echoed from below, followed by the sound of footsteps. What was that? Jason whispered, eyes wide. The door slammed shut, plunging them into darkness once again. The attic trembled as they huddled together, clutching the diary as the footsteps grew closer, the whispers swirling around them. Margaret, Sarah cried. We're here. We found your diary. The walls shook violently as the spirit of Margaret reappeared, her face a mask of anguish. You must leave, she screamed. He has returned. You must find the truth. The footsteps grew louder, and a shadow loomed at the bottom of the stairs. The teens exchanged frantic glances, knowing they were running out of time. We can't stay here. We need to go. They charged toward the attic window, desperate for escape as the shadow climbed the stairs. We're coming back for you, Margaret. We promise, Jason shouted as they pushed the window open, leaping out into the cool night air. Hezer, as they landed in a heap on the grass below, they looked back at the house, its dark silhouette looming against the moonlit sky. The whispers faded into the night, but the sense of urgency remained. They had to return to uncover the truth behind Margaret's tragic fate. The adventure wasn't over yet. This Halloween would change them forever, and the haunting of Cedar Hollow had just begun. The resolution days turned into weeks after that fateful Halloween night, yet the haunting memories of Cedar Hollow clung to Sarah and her friends like cobwebs. The chilling whispers still echoed in their minds, and the face of Margaret with her sorrowful eyes haunted their dreams. They had fled the house that night, but the promise they made to return weighed heavily on them. Determined to find the truth, they gathered at Sarah's house one chilly evening. We need to go back, she said her voice steady despite the flicker of anxiety in her eyes. Margaret's story needs to be told. We can't just leave her like that. I don't know, Sarah, Emily replied, biting her lip. What if we're putting ourselves in danger again? That house is something else. Mike, usually the most skeptical, nodded solemnly. If we don't do this, we'll never know what really happened. We owe it to her. Jason, feeling the weight of their decision, agreed. We have the diary now. We can find out who betrayed her what really happened, but we need to be careful. We're not just going in as thrill seekers anymore. We're going in as detectives. With a renewed sense of purpose, they planned their return to Cedar Hollow. That Saturday night, they met under the eerie glow of a full moon. The house stood silent and imposing, its windows like dark eyes watching them approach. Taking a deep breath, they pushed through the creaking front door, a familiar chill wrapping around them. Let's head to the attic first. Sarah suggested, clutching the diary tightly. They navigated the dark hallways, the air thick with the weight of history. The atmosphere felt different this time, charged with anticipation rather than fear. 
Once in the attic, they settled in, dust motes swirling in the moonlight streaming through a small window. Jason opened the diary and began reading aloud, unraveling the threads of Margaret's life. The entries revealed more about her husband, Charles, a once charming man who had succumbed to jealousy and rage. Margaret's words painted a vivid picture of a woman trapped in a loveless marriage, haunted by the darkness of her husband's possessiveness. Look at this. Mike pointed to an entry dated the night of her disappearance. She wrote about an argument they had and how she feared for her life. Emily shivered. That's the night she vanished. He must have done something terrible. As they read further, they discovered that Margaret had sought help from a friend named Eliza, who lived nearby. If we can find Eliza, maybe she knows what happened, Sarah said, uh, excitement mingling with fear. They decided to look for Eliza's house, armed with the diary and the knowledge of Margaret's final moments. The old maps of Cedar Hollow, dusty and yellowed, revealed that Eliza had lived just outside town, in a small cottage surrounded by overgrown hedges. After a short drive, they arrived at the cottage, its windows dark and its door slightly ajar. This feels wrong, Emily whispered, glancing around nervously. What if she's not here? Only one way to find out, Jason replied, pushing the door open. It creaked ominously, revealing a cozy yet neglected interior. Dust covered the furniture and cobwebs hung in the corners, but it felt safe. Hello? Sarah called out, her voice trembling. Silence echoed back. They stepped inside cautiously, the air thick with a sense of abandonment. As they explored, a glint of something caught Emily's eye, a picture frame lying on the floor, glass shattered. She picked it up, revealing a photograph of Margaret and Eliza, smiling and carefree. Look, this is them together. Maybe she left something behind, Mike suggested, rummaging through a nearby drawer. Just then, Sarah's attention was drawn to a small desk in the corner where a journal lay open. Guys, come here, she called. They gathered around, peering over her shoulder as she began to read. Eliza's journal chronicled her friendship with Margaret, revealing how she had tried to help her escape Charles's clutches. She wrote about seeing the bruises, how worried she was for Margaret's safety, Sarah said, her voice filled with emotion. There's something here about a meeting they planned. Jason noted, tracing the lines with his finger. Eliza was, was supposed to meet Margaret the night she disappeared, but there's a gap in the entries after that. It's like she just stopped writing. The weight of the revelation settled in the room, and a shiver ran through them. We need to find out what happened that night, Mike said. Maybe Eliza knows. As if on cue, the sound of footsteps approached from outside. The door creaked open, and a woman in her 60s stepped inside, her eyes widening in shock at the sight of the teens. Who are you? What are you doing here? We're sorry, Sarah exclaimed, stepping forward. We're looking for Eliza. We found Margaret's diary and her journal. We need to know what happened to her. The woman's expression softened, and she stepped inside, glancing around the room. You found Margaret's diary? I am Eliza. I never thought anyone would come looking for her. The teens exchanged glances, a mix of relief and urgency. We need your help, Jason said. We have to know what happened the night she vanished. Eliza's eyes filled with tears. I was supposed to meet her that night. I had just heard from her about the abuse she was suffering at the hands of her husband. She was so afraid. I arrived at the house, but it was dark. No one answered. I searched for hours, but I never found her. What happened next? Emily pressed, her voice barely above a whisper. I returned home, thinking she had left with someone, Eliza confessed, her voice trembling. But then I heard rumors about her body being found in the woods days later. Charles was suspected, but he claimed she had run away. The revelation hung heavy in the air. He got away with it, Mike murmured, uh, a mix of anger and sadness in his tone. We have to tell the police, Sarah said, determination in her voice. Margaret deserves justice. Eliza nodded her face a mask of grief and regret. I always thought I failed her. Maybe this time, maybe this is how we can finally put her spirit to rest. With Eliza's help, they gathered all the evidence and returned to Cedar Hollow. Their resolve strengthened. They went to the local police station, presenting the diaries, Eliza's testimony, and their own experiences in the haunted house. As the investigation reopened, Margaret's story began to unravel. The townsfolk, once skeptical, started piecing together the truth. Charles was finally brought in for questioning, and with the mounting evidence, his facade of innocence crumbled. Months later, 
as the town held a memorial for Margaret, her spirit seemed to finally find peace. The haunting whispers that once echoed through Cedar Hollow faded into memory, leaving behind only the echoes of her laughter. As they stood together, looking at the memorial, Sarah whispered, We did it. We found the truth. Jason smiled, squeezing her shoulder, and we kept our promise. Together they turned away from the past, stepping into a future free from shadows, knowing they had made a difference. Story number three. The air was crisp and heavy with the scent of fallen leaves as Halloween approached in the small town of Hollow Creek. Known for its festive spirit, the town transformed each October into a haunted wonderland, with carved pumpkins lining the streets and ghostly decorations adorning every front porch. However, for some, Halloween meant more than just trick-or-treating and costume parties. It was a time of lingering dread, particularly for a group of friends who had gathered for an annual tradition the Haunted Harvest Festival at the old Whitmore Farm. The Whitmore Farm had been abandoned for decades, shrouded in tales of tragedy and horror. Legend had it that during a particularly harsh winter, the Whitmore family mysteriously vanished, leaving only whispers of their fate. Some said they were taken by the woods, while others believed they had turned into something far more sinister. Despite the dark history, the friends, Jessica, Mark, Clara, and Sam, were drawn to the eerie allure of the place. This year, they planned to explore the decaying farmhouse and capture evidence of the paranormal on their phones. As dusk settled, they arrived at the overgrown property, the moon illuminating the skeletal trees that surrounded the house. The old wooden structure creaked ominously as they stepped onto the porch, each footfall echoing like a ghostly heartbeat. This place gives me the creeps, Clara whispered, clutching her phone tightly. Mark chuckled, trying to lighten the mood. Come on, it's just an old house. We're here to have fun, right? Once inside, they were greeted by a musty smell and the faint sound of scratching, which they quickly dismissed as the wind. Jessica, the most skeptical of the group, led the charge into the living room, where dust motes danced in the moonlight streaming through broken windows. They set up their phones to record, hoping to capture any signs of the supernatural. As the night wore on, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. They moved from room to room, each creak of the floorboards sounding louder than the last. Sam suddenly stopped, staring at a faded photograph hanging crookedly on the wall. It depicted the Whitmore family. A stern-looking man, a weary woman, and three children with hollow eyes that seemed to follow them. Let's get out of here, Clara suggested, her voice shaking. This feels wrong. Just a little longer, Mark urged, fueled by a mix of bravado and curiosity. We haven't seen anything yet. Just then, a loud bang echoed from the upstairs. They all froze, wide-eyed, exchanging nervous glances. What was that? Jessica whispered, her skepticism wavering. I'll check it out, Sam said, trying to sound brave. He took a deep breath and headed for the staircase, the others reluctantly following him. Each step seemed to amplify the eerie silence and with each creak, the tension thickened. As they reached the top of the stairs, a cold gust of wind rushed past them, chilling their bones. Do you feel that? Clara gasped, rubbing her arms for warmth. Probably just a draft, Mark said dismissively, though he didn't sound convinced. They approached a door at the end of the hallway, which stood slightly ajar. The shadows inside seemed to beckon them closer. I'll go first, Sam declared, pushing the door open wider. The room was empty, save for a dusty old mirror leaning against the wall. In the dim light, they could see their reflections, but something was off. Behind them, a dark figure loomed, its features indistinguishable but undeniably there. Did you see that? Jessica shrieked, spinning around, but the hallway was empty. Panic surged through the group. They hurried back downstairs, their nerves fraying as they debated what to do next. Let's just leave. Clara insisted, her voice quivering. This isn't fun anymore. Just a little more, Mark replied, trying to assert his control over the situation. What if we catch something good on camera? Before anyone could respond, a whisper echoed through the air, chilling them to their core. It sounded like a child's voice, pleading and distant. Help me. Jessica's face turned pale. We need to go, now. They rushed to the front door, but it wouldn't budge. Panic set in as they realized they were trapped. The whispers grew louder, filling the air with a chorus of cries. It was as if the house itself was alive, hungry for their fear. They huddled together, their hearts pounding as they tried to figure out a way out. 
Suddenly, the mirror in the hallway cracked, splintering across the glass with a deafening crash. The friends jumped back, and in that moment of distraction, the door finally swung open, as if inviting them to flee. Run! Mark shouted, and they sprinted out of the house, the whispers trailing behind them like an angry wind. They didn't stop until they reached the safety of their cars, breathing heavily, hearts racing. What was that? Sam panted, looking back at the farmhouse which loomed in the moonlight like a monstrous shadow. I don't know, but I'm never coming back here again, Clara said, her voice trembling. As they drove away, the old Whitmore farm faded into the distance, but the whispers lingered in their minds, a haunting reminder of the terror they had faced. The group had barely slept after their terrifying encounter at the Whitmore farm. Jessica had nightmares of children's cries echoing through the halls, while Clara could still feel the chill of the wind that had rushed past them. Mark, however, was determined to prove that what they had experienced was just a figment of their imagination. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to discover, and he convinced the others to return the following evening. Just one more look, he urged them, his eyes gleaming with a mix of excitement and fear. We can't let fear control us. This time, we'll be ready. Reluctantly, Jessica, Clara, and Sam agreed, though unease settled over them like a fog. As night fell again, they found themselves back at the Whitmore farm, this time armed with flashlights and a voice recorder. The air was thick with tension, and the moon hung high, casting eerie shadows across the property. They approached the farmhouse cautiously, the creaking door swinging open as if it had been waiting for their return. This time, they stepped inside with a palpable sense of dread. The memories of the previous night loomed large, but Mark's bravado pushed them onward. Let's check the basement, Mark suggested, his voice barely above a whisper. If there's anything here, it's probably hiding down there. The group exchanged uneasy glances, but eventually nodded in agreement. They descended the rickety staircase into the darkness, their flashlights flickering nervously. The air grew colder with each step, the oppressive silence weighing down on them. At the bottom of the stairs, they found themselves in a large, damp room filled with old furniture and broken toys. A dusty rocking chair sat in the corner and a doll with missing eyes lay on the floor, its expression frozen in terror. Clara shivered, feeling an overwhelming sense of sorrow in the air. What is this place? She whispered, her voice barely audible. Before anyone could answer, a loud bang echoed from the other side of the basement. They turned as one, hearts racing. Did you hear that? Sam exclaimed, his voice tinged with panic. Mark nodded, excitement flickering in his eyes. Let's check it out. He led the way deeper into the basement, past cobwebs that seemed to cling to them as they passed. They rounded a corner and stumbled upon a small locked door hidden behind stacks of old crates. The door appeared newer than the rest of the house, a stark contrast to the decay surrounding it. Mark tugged at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. Help me, he grunted, leaning his shoulder against the door. Just as they were about to give up, a soft whisper filled the room, this time unmistakable and clear. Don't. Please don't. The sound sent shivers down their spines. Jessica stepped back, her heart pounding in her chest. What was that? She gasped, her eyes wide with fear. We need to get out of here, Clara urged, grabbing Sam's arm. But before they could move, the door creaked open on its own, revealing a small room bathed in shadow. What the hell? Mark whispered, peering inside. A chill filled the air as they hesitated, but curiosity got the better of them. They stepped into the room, their flashlights illuminating a small dusty altar adorned with old toys, broken dolls, and what appeared to be a tattered quilt. On the wall, strange symbols were car carved into the wood, and in the center of the altar lay a dusty, open book. It looked ancient, its pages yellowed with age. Clara leaned closer, the light revealing a chilling inscription. To those who enter, beware the curse that binds the souls of the lost. Guys, this is creepy, Clara whispered, stepping back. We shouldn't be here. Mark, however, was fixated on the book. This could be proof. We can show everyone what we found. He reached out, flipping through the pages. As he read the words aloud, the room grew colder, the shadows deepening. Mark, stop, Jessica pleaded, panic rising in her throat. But he continued, oblivious to the danger. Suddenly the walls shuddered and a low growl reverberated through the room. The altar began to shake violently as if responding to Mark's words. The lights flickered and a chilling breeze swept through the basement, extinguishing their flashlights. Run, Clara screamed. 
her voice breaking the spell. They stumbled backward, pushing past Mark, who was still entranced by the book. Just as they reached the door, a figure appeared in the shadows, a gaunt, spectral woman with hollow eyes and an expression of unbearable sorrow. Help me, she whispered, her voice echoing in their minds. Release us. They bolted up the stairs, adrenaline fueling their escape as the woman's anguished cries followed them. They could feel the weight of the past pressing down on them, desperate and vengeful. As they reached the front door, it slammed shut, trapping them inside. Why won't it open? Sam yelled, banging against it in desperation. The whispering grew louder, a cacophony of voices pleading for release. In a moment of sheer panic, Jessica recalled the words of the book. We need to say its name. Maybe that's the key. Whitmore, Mark shouted, his voice echoing. We release you. The house shook, the whispers crescendoing into a furious roar. The front door burst open, and they stumbled out into the night, gasping for breath. As they reached the safety of the road, they turned back to see the Whitmore farmhouse in the moonlight, its windows glowing with an eerie light. The anguished cries faded, but the weight of the curse lingered in the air. They knew they had only scratched the surface of the horrors that lay within those walls. Never again, Clara said, trembling. We should have left it alone. As they drove away, the specter of the Whitmore family loomed large in their minds, a haunting reminder that some secrets were better left buried. Story number four. It was Halloween night, and the small town of Millfield buzzed with excitement. Children in costumes roamed the streets, their laughter mingling with the crisp autumn air. But for a group of teenagers, Halloween meant something else. A chance to explore the infamous Blackwood Manor, a decrepit house at the edge of town, rumored to be haunted by the spirit of its last owner, Abigail Blackwood. The manor had stood empty for decades, like swallowed by overgrown weeds and tangled vines. Stories of Abigail's tragic death filled the town's lore. A young woman driven to madness after her fiancé disappeared on the eve of their wedding. Locals claimed they could still hear her weeping on quiet nights, and every chill crept through Millfield as tales of her ghostly presence resurfaced. Jake, the unofficial leader of the group, had a knack for daring his friends into reckless adventures. We'll prove there's nothing to be scared of. Ghosts aren't real, he boasted, a smirk plastered on his face. His friends, Emily, a nervous but curious girl, Mark, the skeptic, and Sarah, who secretly believed in the supernatural, followed him to the manor, feeling a mixture of excitement and dread. As they approached the house, the moonlight cast an eerie glow on its cracked windows and sagging porch. The air turned colder, a biting wind rustling the dead leaves around their feet. Maybe we should just trick or treat instead, Emily suggested, her voice wavering. What if we really do see something? Come on, Em, don't be such a scaredy cat, Jake teased, pushing open the creaky front door. It swung inward with a groan, revealing a dark hallway littered with dust and cobwebs. They stepped inside, their flashlights cutting through the oppressive darkness. The atmosphere felt thick, almost suffocating. Shadows danced along the walls as they ventured further into the manor. This place is disgusting, Mark said, wrinkling his nose at the smell of mildew. Let's make this quick. They explored the ground floor, finding nothing but broken furniture and the remnants of a life long gone. As they climbed the stairs to the second floor, the wood creaked ominously beneath their weight. Emily hesitated, her instincts screaming at her to turn back, but the thrill of adventure pushed her forward. Reaching the second floor, they found a long hallway lined with doors. One door stood slightly ajar, and a cold draft emanated from within. Let's check that one, Jake urged, his bravado returning. They pushed the door open and entered a dimly lit room. The wallpaper peeled from the walls, and a large, dusty mirror hung over a fireplace. As they stepped inside, they felt an unexplainable chill. It's just old and creepy, Mark said, though he too was beginning to feel uneasy. Suddenly, Emily pointed at the mirror, her breath hitching in her throat. Guys, look, she exclaimed. They crowded around, staring into the reflection. At first, they saw only themselves, but then, behind them, a shadow flickered, a fleeting glimpse of a figure in white, hair cascading down her back. Did you see that? Sarah whispered, her eyes wide. Jake laughed nervously. It's just your imagination, probably just a shadow from the hallway. But as they turned back to the room, the air grew thick and the door slammed shut behind them with a deafening bang. Panic surged through the group. What the hell was that? Mark yelled, 
his voice echoing in the cramped space. Let me out! Let me out! Emily screamed, banging on the door. The darkness seemed to close in around them, and they could hear faint whispers, like a soft breeze rustling through leaves. Help me! The whispers grew louder, wrapping around them, filling the room with an overwhelming sense of despair. We need to get out of here! Jake shouted, but the door refused to budge. Suddenly, the temperature dropped further, and the mirror began to fog up. In the mist, a face began to form, a pale, anguished woman with hollow eyes and a mouth twisted in sorrow. Abigail Blackwood's ghostly visage appeared, and with a shaky hand, she reached toward them, her voice a haunting wail. Help me find him. The group froze, fear paralyzing them as the ghost's sorrow seeped into their hearts. In that moment, they realized this wasn't just a haunted house. It was a place steeped in tragedy, a home filled with grief and longing. But Jake, ever the brave one, stepped forward. What do you want from us? He demanded, though his voice quivered. The ghost seemed to linger, her expression shifting from despair to something akin to hope. Then, without warning, the room shook, the walls trembling, and the lights flickered violently. Help me, Abigail cried, her voice echoing through the manor. The room shuddered as Abigail's anguished wail reverberated through the air, drowning out the pounding of their hearts. The group felt a cold sweat trickle down their spines, and Jake, despite his bravado, took a cautious step back. We need to figure out what she wants, he shouted over the chaos, clinging to his determination. Emily, still shaking, glanced at Sarah. What if she wants us to help her find her fiancé? She suggested hesitantly. Maybe. Maybe that's why she's haunting this place. Who cares? Mark snapped, panic seeping into his voice. We need to get out of here. This is insane. But before anyone could respond, Abigail's ghostly form began to dissipate into swirling mist, her sorrowful eyes locking onto each of them. Find him, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the tumult. He is lost. Find him. Wait, Jake shouted, reaching out, but the mist enveloped them. And suddenly, the door flung open, revealing the darkness of the hallway once more. It felt like a doorway to freedom, but uncertainty gripped them. They exchanged glances, each weighing the gravity of the situation. Let's go, Sarah urged, taking a hesitant step toward the door. They hurried out of the room, hearts racing, instinct driving them to escape the haunted space. But as they reached the staircase, a heavy feeling settled over them, almost as if the house itself was holding them back. In the hallway, they paused, breathing heavily. What did she mean by find him? Emily whispered, her voice trembling. I don't know, Jake replied, wiping sweat from his brow, but we can't leave without at least trying to figure it out. If she's still trapped here, we might be able to help her, and then we can get the hell out. Mark hesitated, glancing back at the room they had just fled. Are we seriously considering this? It's a ghost story. There's nothing real here. Emily's gaze softened as she looked at the closed door behind them, but she was real. She was crying for help. After a moment of silence, the group reluctantly agreed to investigate. They decided to explore the rest of the house, hoping to find clues about Abigail and her lost fiancé. As they moved deeper into the manor, they stumbled upon a dusty library filled with cobwebs and neglected books. A heavy layer of dust coated the wooden shelves, and the air smelled musty. Jake scanned the room, his flashlight illuminating faded portraits hanging on the walls. Each face seemed to watch them with an intensity that sent chills down his spine. Look for anything that might tell us about her fiancé, he said, leading them toward a large, tattered book on a table in the center of the room. As they flipped through the pages, they found the story of Abigail Blackwood, her life, her love, and the mysterious disappearance of her fiancé, Thomas. According to the account, Thomas had vanished on the night of their engagement party, leaving Abigail heartbroken. Rumors spread that he had run away to escape the marriage, but deep down, Abigail had always believed something sinister had happened. The last entry mentions a hidden garden behind the house, Sarah said, her finger tracing the faded text. Maybe he's buried there or something. Let's check it out, Jake said, his earlier bravado returning. The group exited the library, making their way toward the back of the house. The wind howled outside as if urging them to turn back, but they pressed on. They found a dilapidated door leading to the garden, and after forcing it open, they stepped into the overgrown space. The moonlight cast an ethereal glow over the tangled weeds and wildflowers, making it feel like stepping into another world. 
A broken fountain stood at the center, surrounded by stones, moss creeping over its once grand surface. Do you see anything? Emily asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The eerie silence of the garden was deafening. As they searched the area, Mark stumbled over something hard beneath the thick grass. Guys, over here, he called, kneeling to clear the ground. They rushed over to find a weathered stone slab partially buried. The inscription was faded, but the name Thomas was legible. Oh my God, this is it, Sarah exclaimed, kneeling beside Mark. He's here. She was right. Jake felt a surge of determination. We have to dig him out. Maybe Abigail can finally rest. They all began to work together, pulling away the soil and debris. As they dug, the air grew colder and the whispers returned, now a chorus of sorrowful voices. Help, help, the voices chanted, merging into a haunting symphony. Suddenly, the ground beneath them trembled and the garden filled with a ghostly glow. Abigail's apparition appeared, her expression one of desperate hope, her translucent form flickering with intensity. You found him, she murmured, tears streaming down her ghostly face. Thank you. Finally. With a final push, the group uncovered a small wooden box buried alongside the stone slab. Inside lay a tarnished locket containing a faded photograph of Abigail and Thomas, smiling at one another. As they held it up, the ghost of Abigail smiled back, a look of profound relief washing over her. I can be free now, she whispered, her voice soothing as if she was finally at peace. Thank you for helping me find him. With that, the air around them shifted. The whispers faded into a gentle breeze, and the cold dissipated, replaced by a warm glow. Abigail's figure began to dissolve into shimmering light, her last smile lingering like a soft embrace. The weight of the manor lifted, and the garden seemed to bloom with life. The friends stood in awe, the realization of what they had done settling over them like a warm blanket. They had broken a curse and released a spirit bound by love and loss. As they stepped back, the once haunted house felt transformed. The darkness lifted. We did it, Mark said, his voice filled with wonder. We actually helped her. With hearts still racing, they walked away from Blackwood Manor, the chill of fear replaced by a profound sense of accomplishment. Halloween would forever be, be a reminder of their adventure, a night when they found a lost soul and restored peace. Story number five. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the quaint town of Maple Hollow began its transformation. The once vibrant streets faded into darkness, flickering lights casting eerie shadows that danced on the cobblestone pathways. It was Halloween night, a time when the line between the living and the dead blurred, and tales of the supernatural came to life. Little did the residents know, this year would bring more than just ghost stories and candy. Sarah, a local teenager with a penchant for the paranormal, had always been fascinated by the old Whitmore house at the end of Elm Street. It had stood abandoned for decades, once grand facade, now a crumbling relic draped in ivy and neglect. Legend had it that the house was haunted by the spirit of Eliza Whitmore, a young girl who had mysteriously vanished on Halloween night many years ago. Intrigued by the tale, Sarah gathered her friends, Jake and Mia, to explore the infamous house. Are you sure about this? Mia asked, her voice trembling with a mix of excitement and fear. Come on, it'll be fun. We'll prove that there's nothing to be scared of, Sarah replied, her eyes sparkling with mischief. As they approached the Whitmore house, a chill swept through the air, sending shivers down their spines. The door creaked open at their touch, as if inviting them in. They stepped inside, the musty smell of decay enveloping them. Flashlights in hand, they began to explore the dimly lit rooms, each step echoing ominously in the silence. Look at this place. It's like something out of a horror movie. Jake joked, trying to lighten the mood. Suddenly, a cold breeze swept through the hallway, extinguishing their flashlights. Darkness engulfed them, and a low whisper echoed in the air, sending a wave of terror coursing through their veins. Get out! It hissed, barely audible yet chillingly clear. What was that? Mia gasped, her voice barely above a whisper. Probably just the wind, Sarah said, attempting to sound brave, but the tremor in her voice betrayed her. They fumbled for their phones to use the flashlights, but they flickered and died as well, plunging them into an oppressive darkness. Let's get out of here, Jake suggested, panic rising in his throat. But before they could move, a door slammed shut in the distance, echoing through the empty halls. What the hell? Mia cried, her heart racing. As if on cue, a soft, childlike giggle floated through the air. 
The sounds seemed to come from the staircase leading to the second floor, beckoning them closer. Against their better judgment, Sarah felt an irresistible pull to investigate. It could be someone playing a prank, she said, though her voice trembled. The three of them crept up the staircase, their breath shallow and hearts pounding. The air grew heavier, thick with an unseen presence. At the top of the stairs, they paused, hearing the giggle again, this time closer. They exchanged terrified glances before inching toward a room at the end of the hall. Should we go in? Jake asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Let's just take a peek, Sarah said, her curiosity overpowering her fear. As they pushed the door open, it creaked ominously, revealing a dimly lit nursery adorned with dusty toys and faded wallpaper. In the corner of the room stood a rocking horse, eerily swaying back and forth as if someone had just dismounted. The sight sent chills down their spines. Suddenly, the giggle returned, clearer and more sinister, echoing around them. It sounded like it was coming from right behind them. They turned to find a figure shrouded in darkness, a young girl with hollow eyes and a sinister smile. Play with me, she whispered, her voice echoing in their minds. The air thickened with fear and the temperature dropped. Before they could react, the girl lunged forward, her eyes glowing with an unnatural light. Sarah, Jake, and Mia screamed, backing away in terror, but the door slammed shut behind them. They were trapped. We need to get out, Jake yelled, pounding on the door. Panic surged through them as the girl stepped closer, her laughter morphing into a haunting wail. Let me out, please! Mia screamed, but the walls seemed to close in, the shadows growing darker, swallowing the light. They could feel the weight of the girl's presence an oppressive force that filled the room with despair. Just as hope seemed lost, a sudden flash of light erupted from the broken window, illuminating the room and momentarily pushing the darkness away. In that fleeting moment, they saw the girl's face transform from playful to enraged, her features twisting into a grotesque mask of fury. Leave this place, she shrieked, and the shadows surged forward, threatening to engulf them. With adrenaline fueling their desperation, Sarah yanked the door open, and they stumbled into the hallway, barely escaping the darkness that threatened to consume them. As they fled down the stairs, they could hear the girls' laughter chasing after them, echoing in the empty house, growing louder with each step. Breathless, they burst through the front door into the cool night air, the weight of the house lifting as they raced away. Heart pounding, Sarah glanced back at the Whitmore house, now just a shadowy silhouette against the night sky. We need to tell someone, Mia gasped, trembling. About what? Jake asked, still in shock. No one will believe us. But Sarah knew they had encountered something real, something evil. As they ran, the whispers of the girl lingered in their minds, a haunting reminder of the terror they had just experienced. The trio stumbled through the streets of Maple Hollow, their hearts racing and minds swirling with confusion. The ghostly encounter at the Whitmore house replayed in Sarah's mind, each detail sharper than the last, the girl's hollow eyes, her sinister laughter. As they reached the safety of Mia's home, the reality of what they had witnessed began to sink in. Do you think we should call the police? Mia suggested, still shaken. What are we going to tell them, that we encountered a ghost? Jake scoffed, but his voice trembled with fear. Sarah, however, felt an overwhelming need to investigate further. We can't just forget about it. We need to know who she is and why she's still there, she insisted. The following day, armed with determination and a desire for answers, the three friends gathered in the local library, poring over old newspapers and town records. After hours of research, they finally uncovered the tragic story of Eliza Whitmore, the girl they had encountered. Eliza had disappeared on Halloween night in 1924, the daughter of the wealthy Whitmore family. Rumor had it that she was last seen playing in the gardens, but she vanished without a trace. The town was abuzz with theories. Some said she had run away, others whispered that she had been taken, but the most chilling account suggested that Eliza had met a darker fate. An old article revealed a tragedy, a mysterious disappearance, young girl lost in the shadows, detailing how a storm had swept through Maple Hollow the night she vanished. Look at this, Sarah said, pointing to a photograph of Eliza with her striking blue eyes and a sad smile. She was beautiful. Mia shivered. But why is she still haunting the house? What does she want? Jake flipped through the pages, stopping at an article that made their blood run cold. 
It says here that a family moving into the Whitmore house after Eliza's disappearance also experienced strange occurrences. Voices, shadows, and eventually the mother went mad. The curse, Sarah whispered, her mind racing. It's not just a ghost. She's trapped there, and anyone who enters the house becomes a part of her story. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the library, Sarah proposed they return to the Whitmore house. Hordae, not just to confront the ghost, but to help Eliza find peace. Are you out of your mind? Jake exclaimed, his face pale. We barely escaped last time. We can't leave her like that, Sarah replied fiercely. We need to break the curse. We have to go back. After a tense discussion, they reluctantly agreed. Armed with flashlights, a voice recorder, and a sense of dread, they made their way back to the house, the air growing colder with each step. As they approached the front door, a gust of wind swept through, chilling them to the bone. The house loomed above them, more imposing than they remembered. Maybe we should just turn back, Jake mumbled, but Sarah pressed on, determined to face whatever awaited them. They stepped inside, and the familiar darkness enveloped them. Eliza, we're here to help you, Sarah called, her voice echoing in the silence. We want to understand what happened to you. At first, there was only silence, but then they heard it, the faint sound of a child's laughter, echoing from the hallway. They followed the sound, hearts pounding, until they reached the nursery once more. As they entered, they found the room eerily illuminated by a soft glow, a flickering candle on the floor casting dancing shadows on the walls. In the corner, the rocking horse moved gently, as if someone were riding it. Eliza, are you here? Sarah asked, her voice trembling. Suddenly, the atmosphere shifted. The air grew heavier and a chill ran down their spines. Eliza's figure emerged from the shadows, her eyes wide and filled with sorrow. You shouldn't be here, she whispered, her voice haunting and echoing through the room. They will come for you. What do you mean? Sarah pressed, stepping closer. They trapped me here. I can't leave. Eliza's voice quivered with despair. I wanted to play, but they took me away. Who took you? Jake asked, his curiosity outweighing his fear. The shadows. They want to keep me, Eliza said, her voice tinged with a deep sadness. You must help me break the curse. Find my locket. Your locket? Mia echoed, confused. It's in the garden, Eliza replied, her form flickering like a candle flame. You must hurry. They're coming. Before they could respond, the room darkened, and an oppressive force surged through, a whispering wind swirling around them. Get out! Get out! The voices shrieked, reverberating through the walls, drowning out Eliza's pleas. Run! Sarah shouted, pushing her friends toward the door. They stumbled out of the nursery, the house alive with shadows, twisting and reaching for them. As they fled into the night, they could feel the darkness pursuing them, shadows clawing at their heels. They reached the garden, where weeds and overgrown grass obscured the ground. Where do we look? Mia cried, panic rising in her throat. Dig! We need to find it! Sarah urged, frantically searching through the tangled roots. As they dug, the air grew colder, and the whispering returned, louder and more insistent. You cannot escape, it howled, as if the very earth were warning them. Suddenly, Sarah's fingers brushed against something cold and metallic. With a gasp, she unearthed a small, ornate locket. I found it, she shouted, holding it up triumphantly. In an instant, the shadows recoiled, the oppressive presence diminishing as Eliza's figure materialized before them once more. You did it, she said, her voice now clear and strong. You found my locket. The shadows around them swirled, beginning to dissolve like mist in the morning sun. Thank you, Eliza whispered, her sorrow lifting as she reached out for the locket. Now I can finally be free. With a final glance back at the friends, her face transformed into a radiant smile. You saved me, she said softly, before fading into the light, leaving behind a sense of peace that filled the air. As the first light of dawn broke over Maple Hollow, the three friends stood in the garden, breathless but relieved. They had faced the darkness and emerged stronger, their bond forged in fear and courage. Let's never speak of this again, Jake said, a nervous chuckle escaping his lips. Deal, Mia agreed, a smile creeping onto her face. But deep down, they all knew that Halloween would never be the same. They had witnessed the true horror that lurked in the shadows, and though Eliza had found peace, they would carry the weight of that night with them forever. As they walked away from the Whitmore house, 
the sun rising behind them, they could still hear Eliza's laughter in the breeze, a reminder that some spirits are destined to linger, even when their stories finally come to an end.